In wildlife photography, we often believe that we are subject to the whims of what today brings us, that we can't control our surroundings. While this may be in part true, we can also often predict our surroundings with shocking accuracy. This ability makes the best wildlife photographer stand out from the rest and can help you level up your skill to become a better wildlife photographer. There are two ways to approach wildlife photography. Reactive and visionary. Reactive wildlife photography essentially is a way of photography in which you are simply reacting to the action around you. Let's say you walk out into the middle of an unprecedented scenario and a warbler flies beside you, so you take photographs of it. The second approach of visionary wildlife photography essentially is a way of predicting and planning the scenario that you are about to encounter and preparing yourself for a specific shot that you have in mind. Each of these two techniques has its purpose and place. However, I would argue that if at all possible, visionary wildlife photography is much more effective in capturing a good image. To give some real life examples of how these can exist, let me share a few stories. Back in February and March, I encountered an incredible story of these white-throated swifts that were roosting on the side of a canyon cliff. In most situations, an amateur wildlife photographer might see them where I first spotted them on the bottom of the cliff and attempt all day long to take photos of them from down below. However, the chances of capturing a really nice eye level and aesthetic image from this angle are slim to none, and so I knew that in order to get a good shot that I was hoping for, I'd have to return the following day at sunrise and get on top of the cliff to shoot eye level with them as they soared across the valley. The results were fantastic and incredibly rewarding when I did this. But what about an even more specific example of visionary wildlife photography? A few months ago, I ran across a roost of 10,000 American crows in my city. Soon after, I had an idea to capture these crows in the middle of the night in silhouettes surrounded by a full moon. This would require a month's worth of planning to make sure that the full moon would be in the sky at night, figure out where these crows specifically roosted at to get close enough to them even in the first place, and how also to align them at the same angle angle of the moon in the sky at the right time of night to capture it all at eye level. When I finally pulled off the shots, it was incredibly rewarding, but I could have never done this on a whim to the extent that I was able to do it to that night. To show the benefits of visionary wildlife photography doesn't mean that reactive wildlife photography is without its place, however. In my recent adventure to Morro Bay, I had planned out and visualized a lot of the shots that I took during that trip. However, the one encounter with the vultures feasting on the lancet fish, I could have never predicted that day. In that situation, I realized the opportunity that was being handed to me, and I took advantage of it best that I could, using standard techniques of eye level, foreground, my knowledge of lighting, and how to approach, I did the best that I could in the moment reacting to the opportunity given to me. All this to say that just because you didn't plan a good shot doesn't mean that a good shot can't happen. But more often than not, the best shots do come through planning and envisioning them. I hope these stories helped you in your knowledge of how to capture better wildlife images. If you found value in the video, I'd be honored if you considered subscribing below. And if you want to see how I captured the American crows at night, click on this video in the end screen here. See you guys next time.